then release what you can't control. And you can't control other people. You you mentioned Terry Real, and uh, I, I I love his book. I, I just got his new book, uh, mm-hmm. and I started reading that. But the New Rules of Marriage, great mm-hmm. book. I wish he had called it something else because I use that material with everybody. Yeah. Um, but you know, he he talks about attempting to control someone else as one of the losing strategies in a relationship. Yeah. And when and one point he makes is, and this is very true, when you try to exercise control over someone else, there will be a blowback. Mm -hmm. It will backfire on you because nobody likes being controlled. So, yeah. So we have to practice self-control, not other control. So what would be some suggestions? I mean, because I agree 100%. I mean, and one of the things that, you know, when people tell me, you know, that so-and-so, you know, you, you, you made me feel a certain way. It's like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, I can agree that yeah. maybe I did something that wasn't appreciated, wasn't liked, was upsetting, whatever. Um, I, can, I can acknowledge that maybe somebody didn't like what I was doing, but how mm-hmm. they feel about it is on them. And, you know, I mean, and, and I yeah. will share this to people, but they go, but, but wait. <laughs> I mean, and, and this is one of the things when, when I read one of Terry, and it may have been the New Rules of Marriage that I was reading, and, you know, and Terry was talking about, you know, that we can choose how we feel. And I fought that. I'm going, no, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah. oh, actually, yeah, he's right. We can. Although it takes practice and skill, and these are things we don't teach people. So, no. Um, no. Which is which is why we have you know we're just and and one of the things that makes me crazy right now is is trying to protect our children from any kind of disappointment or difficulty and I'm going oh my gosh you're setting them up to fail as adults because they're not mm-hmm. being given that ability to be flexible and adaptable and lo- really learn their own power so I mean I'm, yeah. I'm just. I'm thinking you and I aren't going to be out of jobs anytime soon. Because, oh, no. I'm not worried about that. I am uh, not worried about that. So, short, so I, I'm going back to what steps can people take. I mean, because I know that there is, it's much easier to look at somebody and say, well, if you would, if my, if my kids or my spouse mm-hmm. or my whoever would just stop doing X, my life would be fine. You know, and then right. it goes back to your know, Dr. Phil's great line. So how's that working for you? Because you know, you're trying right. to focus on other people. And you know, for me, that's the challenge of doing couples work is because there's always this constant, well, look at my partner. I said, yeah, wrong direction, <laughs> wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Because when you yep. start doing something differently, that is when your partner is going to do something different. And, and it's, so how do people get into this? What are, what are some of the things that people can do other than picking up Terry's book or, you know, calling right. you or me? I, I, do, I, I do think that it, it re- any, any relational, emotional help that we're going to get, I, I do believe it has to start with a practice of mindfulness and emotional regulation. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, we have to be able to create a new baseline in our nervous system that gets so agitated when things are, are, are upset or distressing in our life. Uh, and, you know, being able to regulate your emotions and be in a mindful state where you are focused on the present in a mature way, the first best thing to do is to take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. And, and any helpful practice of emotional regulation is going to start with that and include that. Um, because the moment you are stopping and taking a deep breath, breathing in deeply, exhaling slowly, uh, you are beginning to take responsibility for that fight or flight response that wants to collapse your opportunity to really face a situation with wisdom and compassion and humility. Uh, so having a mindfulness practice, I think, is extremely critical. Uh, to be able to do this. I, I once heard uh, Dr. Eric Gentry with the Arizona Trauma Institute say that if he could get everybody to take 200 deep breaths a day, that would change the world. Oh, I love and that. I, I, and I, I have found that to be true. 
-hmm. So, you know, if you use a, there's a bazillion different ways out there, uh, patterns of breathing, just there's no right or wrong way. As long as you are being intentional, slow, and deep with your breathing, it's, it's going to have an effect. If it doesn't have an effect right away, keep doing it. I used to be one of those people that said, this doesn't work for me. Uh, you've got to keep doing it. It has to become a practice. If you can pair that with healthy mantras and affirmations in your life, and I'm not talking about the unrealistic ones, like I'm going to have a million dollars tomorrow. Right. Uh, but, but, the, but the realistic ones, especially the ones that have to do with your value, your worth, your, your lovability, uh, you know, I am a worthy human being. I am acceptable. I am good enough. I think if you pair a breathing mindfulness activity with, with mantras and affirmations that affirm your worth, I, I think that's the foundation, the foundational practice that needs to happen here. And then on top of that, exercising those healthy boundaries through, uh, you know, the, the, the protocol that I alluded to earlier, start with a request. Mm -hmm. decide if you can live with their answer or not. And if you decide you'd rather not be okay with that, then set a boundary that includes your alternative to what you're going to do, a healthy alternative that you will engage in to take care of yourself when someone else is unavailable to accommodate you. Mm -hmm. Don't get resentful. Don't try to control them into doing what you want them to do. You find your well-being from within. And then I think most I, I won't say most importantly, but probably the most obvious thing is, uh, and, and immediately helpful thing is to work on the communication skills. Yep. Um, and there's a number of different resources out there for that. Terry Reel's book, The New Rules of Marriage, does an excellent job uh, mm -hmm. in, in helping folks communicate. Uh, but humbly and compassionately sharing what's going on with you and listening and being patient to what's going on with someone else. I call those our rough drafts. Yeah. You know, we're always interpreting a situation. And, and I used to work for a guy that would say, given a lack of information, people will connect the dots in the most pathological way possible. That is absolutely so we are, true. <laughs> we are wired for the negative. Uh -huh. So we have to hold our thoughts lightly. We have to hold our assumptions lightly. I'm okay with assuming, but we need to stop acting on unfounded conclusions. Awesome. We need to be able to, we need to be able to share a rough draft of what we're thinking. Here's what I think you meant when you said that. Uh, here's what I think is going on in your mind or what I think you're thinking about me right now. I'm not enjoying this thought. I'd love to be wrong about it. Can we talk about it? Yeah. And then if you hear something like that from, from, from your partner, spouse, loved one, be patient with their rough draft. Don't give them a hard time for assuming the worst about you because you've done it about them. Right. So okay. be patient. Be patient with each other's rough drafts. Be willing to listen. Be willing to share. Uh, that is a risk. That is a leap of faith. And sometimes that is best done with the help of a professional like yourself. Uh, you know, sometimes we're not quite ready to start those kinds of conversations, and in which case we just need to disengage until we get the help we need. Absolutely. But we have to stop acting on those unfounded conclusions. We, we have assumed so much about each other. Right. And we have built this framework that has become so dysfunctional and inaccurate. It's an inaccurate map of what's going on. So, Brent, I'd like to thank you so much for this. Can you please share where people can find out more about resilience, resilience training um, from you? Yeah, so I actually have a couple websites. Probably the best one for your listeners would be innerempowered.com. Um, that's where I offer uh, online uh, individual and group coaching. Um, I do also offer in-person therapy in my office in Phoenix, and I realize that's probably not a, uh, the most ideal option for, for most of, of your listeners, but I have had a few folks uh, travel from around the country to come work with me, and that's quite an honor to get to do that. Um, but, yeah, uh, innerempowered.com is, is going to be the best uh, way to get started, and I appreciate that. Well, terrific, because – what we've said here today, what you've heard today, is a lot of what you do when faced with challenging situations is habit. Coping skills that you developed early in life that are keeping you stuck now. And the good news is that, these, that you learn these behaviors, which means you can learn new ones. And ones that will pull you out of a downward spiral and 
spiral and refocus you in a more positive way so that you can create a smoother, more loving marriage. And hopefully one of the things that you will continue to do as a habit is listening to this show. So until next week, stay loving.